Kai Havert, the silky German. Arsenal apparently want to get rid of him already. Yeah, less than a season. They are ready to cash on Kai Havert and they are ready to take a reduced price of around 40 million for him. They are offering him to Real Madrid and other teams. Probably Saudi Arabia might come to the, the equation to try to help Arsenal here. Wait, no, hold he's on. Going somewhere. He's going somewhere. Wait, 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 wait. Where's he going? Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> please take, please take Kai Havertz from us. He ain't going give, nowhere. Give us one million pounds, brother. Please. He ain't going nowhere. Yeah. I still respect Kai Havertz. To be honest with you, if you look at his comps before he joined Chelsea when he was in Germany, man, nobody even comes close, and that's why. I don't rely anymore on compilation videos on social media. Even today, people are talking about Florian Vince is the guy that will save the world, the second coming of Ronaldinho and all that because he can do some tricks and he can score some goals and assist here and there. But Kai Havert was way better than him. But four years after that, or three years, now nobody remembers what they said about Kai Havert when Chelsea signed him. He was the silky German. He was the guy who was going to replace everybody, you know, Eden Hazard, Didier Drogba, Diego Costa. He was the next big thing. And back then, if you said that Chelsea shouldn't go for Kai Havert, many people, the same people who are insulting 24-7, we're going to kill you back then because you can't say no to somebody like Kai Havert. When he's available on the market, you have to take an opportunity because Klopp wanted him, because Real Madrid wanted him, Paris Saint-Germain wanted him. So we have to jump to the opportunity because other teams wanted him. Lesson learned? I don't think so because today's generation is about narrative, 15 second social media TikTok and they make their decisions. This is business. Hey, come. <laughs> Dada, why? Why, Dada, why? This why? is business. This is my swag. I know, but I did business. Shut up. Chelsea are probably laughing in their way to the bank to collect those 65 million in the bank. But I don't really give up on people. You know, I still believe that there is something in that player, Kai Havert. I thought they're gonna play a system with a proper, proper number nine, a target man, and Kai Havert can just play with that target man or just a little bit behind that uh, number nine to take the pressure off him. But Arteta is using him in the midfield as a... Uh, as a dm sometimes and the number eight is number six i don't even know what position kai havert is playing the same was a chelsea football club when he was used as a target man and they couldn't get anything out of kai havert now arsenal need a proper target man they need a number nine they need a bully they need somebody with a different profile and Ivan Tony apparently is the guy that they're gonna go for him. I don't know how tall he is because you know TV. I've never like watch him uh, live or anything, but people say that he's less than than six, so he's like uh, I don't know five ten, five eleven, something like that. But he looks like he's very good in air. He doesn't look like he's a short guy. But many people told me that he's not that tall, but. He's just imposing and a real bully in the box. He can get the job done. He's uh, proven in the Premier League, even though he was out for six months or more than that, eight months. And don't expect him to just come after six or seven, eight months out and start scoring goals. But now he's training uh, with Brentford. And he's gonna get he's gonna be ready in January, but slowly and surely he's gonna build to to his uh, normal level. So let me know in the comment section down below if Ivan Tony 
is the solution for Arsenal or you think he's going to be better at uh, Chelsea than Arsenal?